Hello everyone, welcome back. We are now in the next chapter where we are going to focus on relational databases. In this presentation, we are going to focus on the introduction to relational databases. In chapter 1 of this lecture series, we have seen a lot of data models. What is a data model? It is the underlying structure of a database and actually this data model is a conceptual tool for describing the data, the relationship among the data, the data semantics and the data constraints. If you are directly watching this lecture, I request you to navigate to the first chapter of this playlist and please do watch the lecture titled Data Models. And we have seen the various categories of data models, the relational model, the entity relationship model, the object based data model and the semi structured data model. In this chapter, we are going to exclusively focus on the relational databases where relational databases follows relational model. If you are clear with relational model, then understanding relational databases is easy. So why waiting? Let's see the basic structure of relational databases. What is a database? Basically, a database is a collection of tables. And we know what is a table. A table is actually a data structure that is used to describe the data in rows and columns. Are tables going to store only data? No. Tables represent both data and the relationship. I will explain you. Suppose if you have a table with four attributes, obviously we store all the data in the tables and this table is actually described by rows and columns. Let's take, I am talking about a student table and this student table contains multiple attributes or columns. Let's take only two columns, roll number and name. Say for example, if roll number is 101 or 101 and the name of the person is Mohammed Khan. So if you observe here, the relationship is the roll number 101 is pertaining to the student Mohammed Khan. Or in other words, Mohammed Khan is having the roll number 101 or 101. So what does it mean? This means there exists a relationship among the values that are stored in the table. In other words, when you have a row, each value in a row is having relationship among other values. And not only this, tables can also be used to maintain the relationship among other tables. Say for example, an advisor table can be used to maintain the relationship between a student table and an instructor table. No worries, I will explain that shortly. And that's why I have mentioned here as tables represent both the data and the relationship among the data present in the table. Now in relational model, are we going to refer this as table? No, we are going to refer this as relation. Then why the term we are using for representing tables as relation in relational model? Because there is a close association between the DBMS concept, the table and the mathematical concept, the relation. And that's why in relational model, we use the term relation instead of referring it as tables. Anyway, we will talk about this elaborately in the coming lectures. For now, just understand a table in relational model or a table in relational databases are referred as relation. Basically, relations are tables, but the important thing to note here is it has a very close association with the mathematical concept called relations. Anyway, you will understand about this when we see the concepts relational algebra and relational calculus in the coming lectures. For now, just understand a relation in relational database management system is basically a table only. But we can apply many mathematical operations on relations when you compare with the table. Then what about the rows and columns? A row in a relation is referred as tuple and a column in a relation is referred as attribute. In a table, we represent rows and columns. In relation, we represent it as tuple and attributes. Remember, a tuple is basically a row in a relation. And coming to attribute, this is actually the column in a relational database management system. And we have already talked about instances and schemas. What is an instance? The data present in the database at a particular moment, we call it as an instance. In relational database, we call it as a relation instance. What do we mean by this? This relation instance refers to a specific instance of a relation. It means a specific set of rows. For example, if you are referring to a specific set of rows in a relation, then this is referred as relation instance. And coming to the next important concept in relational database, which is the domain. What is a domain? It is actually a set of permitted values. 
I'll give you an example. Let's take we are talking about a banking database and let's assume this banking database is a relational database. Let's also assume this bank has five branches, only five branches. The branches are in New York, Washington, San Francisco, Chicago and Austin. Or whenever we see a value in the database against a branch, then only these five values are permitted. What are the values? New York, Washington, San Francisco, Chicago and Austin. Let's say someone is trying to insert a row into the table with the value Los Angeles. Obviously Los Angeles is not a set of permitted values because there is no branch called Los Angeles for that particular bank. In that case, that particular value is not belonging to a set of values, right? So that is what we call as a domain. Basically a domain is a set of permitted values. And please see here an important question. When a domain is said to be atomic? The answer to this question should be known by all database administrators because this is going to be playing a crucial role in relational databases. So let's understand what do you mean by atomic. A domain is said to be atomic if the elements in the domain are considered to be indivisible. Let's say we have a column in the table as the phone number. This phone number if it is considered as a single value then it is an indivisible unit and we can say that this phone number is atomic in nature. Instead, if we consider phone number has multiple units like country code, area code and the local number. In that case, this phone number is referred as non-atomic. So please be noted that when a domain is said to be atomic in nature, when the elements of the domain are considered to be indivisible. So in the domain example, we have taken branch name, right? The branch name that we have taken are New York City, Washington, San Francisco, Chicago and Austin. All these are indivisible in nature. So we can quote that the values present in the branch name is atomic in nature because it cannot be divided further. And another important thing to note about the relational database is this null values. What is a null value? Remember this null value is not a blank value or empty spaces or no value or no characters. Null values in DBMS is a special value which represents that the value is either unknown or that does not exist. I'll give you an example. Let's take if a student has no phone number. In that case, we cannot give zero as the phone number because zero is not a null value. At the same time, it may be added in the future. So a student who is not having a phone number in the database, the phone number column for that particular student, it should be a null value because it is either unknown or does not exist. I will elaborate about the concept of null values when the course progresses. And I will ask you a question. Will the relations are generally sorted in nature or unsorted in nature? The relations are generally unsorted in nature. The reason for this I will explain you in the following slides. Let's take an example relation. The example we are going to take here is the instructor relation which contains four attributes instructor ID, instructor name, department name and salary. And can you see here we have some rows here. This is actually a tuple in relational database. 34586 the instructor ID is pertaining to John who is working for the department biology who is drawing a salary of 65,000. Now the instructor ID of John is 34586 and 34586 is actually John. And that's why I told you a row in a table or a tuple in a relation represents the relationship among a set of values. And this is about the instructor relation. I'll show you one more relation, the student relation. In this student relation, we have four attributes, student ID, student name, student department and the total credits earned by the student. So far we have seen two relations, instructor relation and student relation. Let's assume these two relations are a part of university database. What is a database? It's a collection of table. In this case, we are assuming student table or student relation and instructor relation are part of university database. How the relationship between the tables or relations are established? It is also achieved using another relation. I'll show you that now. In this case, we can see that the advisor is a relation that contains exactly two columns, the student ID and the instructor ID. The advisor for the student who is having the student ID 103 is 25252. What do we mean by this? It means, I'll go to the previous slide, 103 is B, 
and the instructor for the student B is Alia 25252. That is what is mentioned here. The student with the student ID 103 is B and the student B's advisor is Alia who is having the instructor ID 25252. And this is how the relationship among multiple tables or relations are maintained in the relational database management system. Before we sign out, let's see a homework question. Here is the course relation. This course relation has course ID, the title, the department name and credits. And what I am asking you to do is just try to figure out the relationship between the student relation or the instructor relation with this course relation. So this will definitely help you how these relationships are maintained in the database. Also, I am going to answer you one more question whether the relations are sorted or unsorted. If you see here, I have just shown you an example where the course ID is actually sorted here because this course ID is actually sorted alphabetically. B Biology followed by Computer Science followed by Electrical Engineering followed by Finance followed by History followed by Music and then Physics. So this is alphabetically sorted. In real time, databases need not be sorted. Let's say I'm going to insert a new row to this course relation. Let's say the name of the subject is cryptography and network security. And obviously it will be a part of the computer science department. But do you think that this new row will be inserted between this and this? No. And that's why I told you in real time the relations are not sorted. In the storage only it may not be sorted. But while displaying you can sort and display. And that's it guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation and thank you for watching.